Yes, this was uh, quite an interesting project. These investigators from Loughborough University in the UK uh, went into eight primary schools and gave a special intervention to four of them, and then the other four served as uh, controls. And the intervention involved working with the teachers. They gave them a CD to give them some materials to work with. They had an interactive website for the kids, the parents, and the teachers. They had written materials. They had these runs that they were promoting uh, and getting the kids to, to work toward being able to uh, compete in some of these mass demonstration uh, runs. And they ran this program for 10 months and collected a bunch of data before they started the intervention and after the intervention to see what happened to things such as the physical activity levels of these kids and their body fatness and uh, eating habits and the like. Well, it doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But we have to remember there were nearly 600 children in this study. And so these are average numbers that we're looking at, uh, roughly 20 minutes uh, difference in physical activity. So some kids were getting a lot more than that, and some kids were, of course, getting less. But maybe to put that in perspective a little bit, I've been working the last several years with some colleagues at the University of Bristol also in the UK. We've been following a cohort of several thousand children where we've obtained very precise measures of their physical activity and also precise measures of their percent body fat. And we have some work, it's still in progress, of a paper out now for review, so I can't really talk a lot about the specifics, but there, a 15-minute difference in physical activity, measured essentially in the same way as in this study, had a really significant effect on the percent body fat two years later. So it's at, 20 minutes doesn't sound like much, but that could be quite substantial for future weight gain and percent body fat. So taken in the context of the kind of research I've talked about and other studies, 20 minute difference between two groups of kids, nearly 200 and, well, more than 250 kids in each group is really pretty darn good. I don't think there are any programs in the United States that are exactly the same as the one that was done uh, in, in Northeast England, but there are a number of investigators at different institutions around the United States that are doing similar programs, in-school programs, after-school programs, maybe even before-school programs, or programs out in the community. Uh, there is one example of a program called Triple Play, which is administered through the boys and girls clubs in the United States, and it has similar objectives to the one we're, we're talking about. They're trying to get the kids to be more physically active and eat their fruits and vegetables and basically eat a more healthful diet. So this is an area of research that is expanding, not only in England and the United States, but in other countries around the world. We have to address this problem of too many kids sitting too much, gaining too much weight. We've got to build back in those healthful lifestyles. Go out and play, as your mother told you. Well, I, I think corporate America uh, has a responsibility to help improve uh, uh, the lifestyle, health and lifestyle of all Americans. And I am very pleased that many companies are, are doing this, investing in research. Uh, Coca-Cola has invested in this triple play project. And I, I applaud corporate America for taking uh, the initiative and taking some responsibility. Well, I think having goals in life uh, really <laughs> is a good thing, uh, both for exercise and for studying and for healthful diet and any number of other things we, we, we could mention. So, yes, the behavioral psychologists tell us that it is important to set goals if we're trying to get people to change their physical activity behavior.
Absolutely. Being physically active is good for you. Uh, there's been a lot more research, actually, on physical activity interventions in adults, but the same approaches work. These cognitive and behavioral strategies of goal setting, problem solving, self-monitoring your behavior. We need to be teaching this to kids in school, and I've been very active in recent years doing research studies trying to teach those things to adults. So yeah, th th there's no mystery here. Uh, it's easy to be sedentary in modern society, and we need to help people learn how to integrate more activity in daily life. The beauty of the new physical activity guidelines, 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity, such as walking, over the course of a week. And you can accumulate that in bouts of 10 minutes or more. So just find time for 15, 10-minute bouts over the course of the week. There's nobody that's too busy to do that. Now, certainly for young children, like the primary grade children studied in this study, I mean, parents have to take a role here. And one of the things that has been investigated uh, by a, a professor at Stanford University and, and others is regulating TV time. Do not allow kids just unfettered access to television. And the American Academy of Pediatrics has uh, regulated it, you know, an hour or two a day. Uh, I think they've said, I know some people have said, uh, a child should not have a television in their bedroom. And parents should be in charge of that switch. Uh, use it a little bit sparingly. There's nothing wrong with TV. There's nothing wrong with video games, unless a kid just does this hour after hour after hour, and they never get any active play. Um, I think most dietitians, and, and I certainly as ascribe to this uh, point of view, uh, is, is that there are no good foods, bad foods. We need to get out of that way of thinking. You know, all foods can be accommodated uh, in a healthful diet. It's a matter of balance. Now, the benefits of being regularly active are simply enormous. Uh, the death rates in active adults, as we follow them forward in time, are much lower. We see in, in many papers that we've published, 50% lower death rates in those who are active and fit as compared with those who are sedentary and unfit. This applies to men. It applies to women. It applies to people who are healthy. It applies to people who have diabetes, people who have hypertension, people who have cardiovascular disease. So number one is chronic disease and delaying mortality by being physically active. Also, physical activity is good not only for the heart and lungs and body, it's good for the brain. Older adults, people 65, 70 and, and older, who are physically active are much less likely to develop senile dementia. I have never met anyone who says, oh, I can hardly wait until I become old and frail and senile and my family puts me in a nursing home and I'm going to lose my freedom and independence. No one wants to wind up that way. And so keeping your body healthy and functional, keeping your brain healthy and functional is of utmost importance and physical activity helps with that.